Hello everyone, I'm Raga Olga de Silva, or Totally Out Now As You Know Me. At Speaking Minds, as you know, we continue our focus on sharing powerful stories, insightful lessons, hosting thought leaders, motivational speakers, industry experts, performers in the Other Side series from Speaking Minds, which is India's largest international speakers bureau. I'm the co-founder and director of Speaking Minds. In the current stay-at-home environment, Speaking Minds has continued to offer our clients support for online streaming, you know, through our huge repository of talent that we manage. Motivational seminars, workshops, seminars with masterclasses, even conferences and summits online. We are also curating a huge amount of B2P talks, as you know. Now, today is going to be wow. You've heard our speaker's voice in a billion devices, giving directions in GPS devices worldwide and as the original Australian Siri in iPhones. She's an award-winning singer, songwriter, author of two books. When she's not telling people where to go, she's practicing yoga apparently, or most likely playing ping pong with a 12-year-old son. How wonderful. Please join me in welcoming from Australia, now living in New York City, entertainer, author, and the only woman men will take directions from. Karen, welcome. Where are you Hello. right now? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not authorized to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> so have you been to India is my first question. Have I been to India? Oh, my goodness. Not yet. Okay, you know, this gave me gave me goosebumps, uh, Karen, hearing that voice. I just that kind of voice. <laughs> that voice. Oh, how amazing to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our... Thank you for Radio having Spike me. Team. This is going to be so fun. Okay, I just want to know this voice. Like, seriously, when did this journey start? Well, what can I tell you? Let me tell you that um, my parents would... Uh, say that I started talking when I was about nine months old and never stopped <laughs> and that they would only know that I was um, asleep because it was quiet. So <laughs> I I was a talker always and then end up recording a voice system that ends up all over the world in a billion devices. It's crazy. How amazing. How many? It's, it's a billion devices, is it? Over a billion, yeah. Oh, my God. And so what I happens when you sit in a car and you are turning on the GPS? What happens then? When I'm talking to myself and telling myself where to go, <laughs> where to go and what to do. I have so many stories. It is, it is kind of crazy. Well, you know, um, my home is in New York City. And my husband and my son and I, we don't own a car. So we're really only, we, we get around on public transport usually and we, we walk and or we fly. Not right now, of course. But um, when we travel and we rent a car, that's when we'll occasionally have the GPS or the navigation on. And <laughs> that's when we'll, we will have some adventures where I'll really be talking to myself. So what happens when you hear yourself? I just want to know. I'm curious to know. When I'm when I'm giving when, directions when, to myself? Yes, yes, yeah. It's so weird. I mean, it's been a long time, but it's still weird. I, you know, it's uh, at one point when our son is 12, but when he was much younger, um, I, th I wondered if he thought that everybody's mummy was in the voice in their own car, you know. Did you ever ask him that? I must ask him that. I will yeah. ask him that. And so what happens when you ask yourself online on Siri and you don't get a response? So, uh, you know, we have um, a voice assistant device in the home and we also have, uh, I also have, you know, Siri on devices all over the place like we all do. And I am the only one in our household. Siri does not understand. Alexa does not understand. I, I can ask a question. And I'll get no response. And then my husband or my son will ask the same question and immediately get an answer. It is, I don't get it, but it's, it's just what we laugh about it because it happens every time. Oh, how amazing. Because Alexa does that to me as well, just so that you know. Oh, I asked for George oh, I don't Michael. feel so alone. Yeah, I asked for George Michael and she plays Elton John. I don't know why. Where, where's oh, the connection? Oh, no. George <laughs> Michael's the best. Mostly, I don't understand you. Can you try again? And I kind of try 20 times and then I say, fine, I'll go back to Siri. 
but uh, karen this is very interesting so how you know apart from having a powerful voice which we all know which we will listen to today i want to know how did this journey start from being a performer entertainer and then finding yourself in such devices i'm sure well, it was easy I, i had done a lot of voice over work for many years and singing on jingles and commercials i'm a singer and songwriter and i got an audition i had moved to new york city and the brief from the agent was they were looking for a native australian female voice over artist living in the northeast of the united states and i saw that description i was like the description of me so i got the job i went to the audition i got the job and they said we're going to need to take you to a town called Ithaca in upstate new york and we are going to need to record for 50 hours Oh, and so 50 hours and we will need to to have you there for 3 weeks because we only want to record a maximum of 4 hours a day we don't want your voice to sound tired or fatigued in any way and off i went the script was massive and we recorded this incredible voice system and can i tell you the technical part yeah i'd love to know okay excellent so they wanted to capture every combination of syllables possible so they could chop that up and create a voice system based on my speaking voice and that's what they did so because i've been intrigued you know in india we have a lot of uh, indian places right like hindi in the devanagari script and it's fascinating it will say yahan se jana it speaks in hindi in the devanagari uh, language and i'm thinking like how does this foreign voice speak in an indian voice and gives directions in an indian language or the local language very very clever a uh, very clever team of engineers figured out how all of those syllables would be put together wow so what came first siri or the gps go well the first it was it's all from the same voice system okay. and the voice system first popped up in gps devices um those standalone ones uh that when that you would plug in in your car before they even put them into the dashboard of the car or put them into our phone so that's what happened first wow so did you ever think that you would be so popular that your voice would reach billions okay so when i was a little girl growing up in mackay north queensland australia middle of nowhere well very close to the great barrier reef a beautiful part of the world but when i was growing up I dreamed so long and hard that my voice, my singing voice and my songs would be on everybody's lips and in car radios and be all over the world. Oh, wow. But apparently my big big massive dreams somewhere in there my energy wasn't specific enough because it ended up my speaking voice was everywhere and not yet my songs and my my singing voice quite how I imagined. So did that happen in New York later like your singing voice also became popular as much as your Yes uh, well voice? I I have uh nine albums I've recorded oh. and written a lot of songs that I have recorded and released and some of my music has been on television shows and uh it's you know it's that's my my true gift is as as a songwriter as i understand when we've spoken in the past uh, you know we've known each other for a while now karen i just i remember one thing you said to me that your fans uh, feel that they're very close to you they feel very attached to you and you receive a huge amount of fan mail can you just talk to us about that well you know social media makes it so easy and wonderful doesn't it and people can connect with me i have i have my own community now on patreon and i i have my social media commu- community and it's so lovely uh to have people become aware of me somehow or or have a connection to my voice in some way and then they reach out and will tell me uh about an incident or uh, the wonderful trips we take together um you know i've had people reach out this guy called Ryan said oh Karen uh last weekend we went to my cousin's wedding i mean up my voice navigated him in the rental car but he is talking to me as if we uh were together and i was actually there it is so weird karen i find this super powerful you know it's like for me personally i mean not that i own a car here but you know every time i sit in a car rented car that there's somebody else 
who we have no idea who this person is, guiding us, navigating us. To me, it's almost like it's, I draw a parallel to you know real life coaches or people, trainers and performers who have such a significant role they play in our life. And I think that's the role you play. Sometimes when I'm, you know, when I'm driving and I used to drive quite a bit when I lived in New Zealand and I used to have a conversation with this person, I, I honestly did, you know, all through my good times and bad times when I had a right. terrible time of saying, come on, take me there. And, you know, where, how do I get there? And why is my life not going in the direction that I want to it to go? You know, those conversations that you have with your friend or someone, you know, I used to have with you and I'm so pleased. Oh, <laughs> Well, it's like having a constant companion, isn't it? It is. It is. So yeah. I, just, I just want to know that when people know that part about you, that they know that you are that voice, how do they typically react? How do I react? How do they react? How do people oh, react? People get very excited. And I think it is because, as you say, people make a connection, a personal connection with that voice. And it makes sense because sometimes we'll be on a road, we'll be, we, we take a wrong turn, we might be alone, it could be dark uh, at night, it could be raining and we could be lost, you know, we could be feeling very vulnerable and that voice of, of companion, that, that voice of comfort, that voice of uh, reason is with us and it, it, it makes us feel, I think, um, safer in some way and I know that certainly that's been an experience for me when I have been you know not quite on the right road um to have that that companionship and I I think that it makes sense that we do develop a relationship with those voices and yeah. I feel privileged actually that people will come and share some pretty personal things with me uh in you know after I speak on a stage and share the message of recalculating and share my story and they will come and then feel um, comfortable enough to share pretty vulnerably with me. So I also I've also heard that sometimes you've got accosted by your fans. Is it in a good <laughs> way? The word accosted is negative. Well, right? you know uh, it de it depends on the um, on the environment, but I I find that across the board every everywhere everyone um i think people are very uplifted by what i represent or the story and i find it to be a very positive experience when i meet people so have you faced roadblocks yourself well i like everybody else on the planet i am a human being so by definition yes plenty <laughs> of roadblocks <laughs> So where did the GPS, you know, this beautiful coaching that you do on finding your inner voice or recalibrating, you know, the GPS uh, girl. So how, how did you come up with that idea and how are you helping people with that? Through well, that? Quite a while ago now, um, 10 years ago now, I made this connection between directions in the car and directions in life and business. And I realized that the word recalculating could be used as, uh, a metaphor and you know when we're in the car and we hear the gps say recalculating if we've taken a wrong turn in a few quick steps we are back on track usually headed toward our destination and i thought in life when we take a wrong turn you know sometimes we'll be meandering on a back road metaphorically sometimes for years if only we use the power of recalculating, being able to start again at any moment. It's like a do-over, like so, the ability to shift the energy. It is for ourselves. And I created the five directions for recalculating this five-step process to navigate change and started to share that message and share my story. And it's taken me to many places around the world Sure. And and it's been um, really sharing the tools that I've used in my own life to keep going no matter what. I'm going to come back to more on these questions. And in the meantime, can I just read some of the comments that we're getting? For sure. And we've got a fantastic uh, audience today. And I'm just going to read. Shreya Mistri says, love, 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 Raga. Shreya, lovely to have you here. 
Manoj Gursahani says, global voice, what an interesting guest, he says. Thank you, Manoj. She is super interesting. We haven't even started yet, really. Kruti Parik says, hey. And Josh says, this is amazing. OK, let me just read. Anirban Bhattacharya says, with the advent of tech, the voice has become more evolved from being mechanical to real human voices. AI is now the new friend. So any comments on that, Karen? You know, AI is the new friend. I think it is happening for a lot of people. And I, what I hear a lot is about children, that children love to grab their parents' phone and ask Siri, for example, questions all day long. It's like a constant companion. And I find it uh, pretty incredible that that's the case. It's interesting because that's an, the next feedback that we've got from Aidens B says, Karen must be feeling good being the navigator for literally the entire mankind. And he's saying it's an interesting conversation. Thanks, uh, Venkat. I know it's Venkat there. So, yeah, that's, that, that's something that actually every time I've spoken with you, Karen, every time I've connected you over emails or conversations, I feel what a huge responsibility. Does it feel like a responsibility to you? I think it's fortunate. It's very much in line with the kind of values that I have anyway. So in some ways, it feels like kind of a, a alignment, you know, divine alignment that I would be a person whose voice is in so many places and that I am someone who has a, mes a message to share and something to do in the world that helps to uplift humanity. And I think it's it just lines up with that yes it was someone else myself oh, karen it was a random voiceover job okay i'm not attached to one way or another but for me personally as you ask I, it does feel like it's really in alignment and in alignment with who you are as a person you that's think right you, yeah and you think that uh, you know what we spoke about a little earlier about the inner gps you think we can change directions if we are in a, if we are like in a car, we're going in some direction, we've lost our way. You think we can come back? Is it always possible, or sometimes difficult? Well, I do think so, and I think the biggest piece is being willing. You no, know, it, it's it's difficult if somebody is unwilling yes. to see a different perspective or to want to improve something, but uh, to do with their lives. But if there is a willingness, that opens the a really a limitless potential sure so you're saying the intent has to be there for Absolutely. it to be right do you so you spoke about tools right that you provide people tools through your workshops that's the most important thing right when we lose direction in life what i find is lacking is that we don't know what to do sometimes we go through therapists we go through our friends we go through a whole lot of experiences before we understand or know whether we can cope or we cannot cope so for you you're saying that you, there are some ready tools you give through this uh, these sessions. Well, I I like to um, remind remind us that we all have what I like to call our inner GPS, our inner sense of self. Some people like to call this their intuition or their gut or their um, instincts or their heart. There are many words for what I refer to as the inner GPS, but it's that inner sense of knowing what is right for ourselves. And sometimes we're connected to it sure. and sometimes and a lot of the time we are not. But I, I like to speak about this because I find that with practice we can really connect with our inner GPS and it always sends us the right direction for ourselves. So what happens if you know instinctively that it's the right thing for you to do, but you don't follow that? Well, we all have to, been in that situation yeah. and then there are consequences. And, and sometimes, sometimes we will listen to everybody around us telling us how the thing that we think we want to do is not a good idea. And then we listen to everyone around us. And, oh, they must know much better than I know about myself. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? Absolutely. But how many times we do, I do it, I have done it in the past all the time where I've gone with what everybody else thinks is much better for me than what I think is right for me. And then 
time will pass and we'll realise, oh, if only I had listened to myself and not to all those other people. And then there are those times where everyone around you is saying, no, 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 don't do that. And you know, think, I know this is right. And you do it and pe people can't believe it. And then it was right. So I think it's it's a it's a learning. We're all here learning as human yeah, beings. Sure. But, you know, uh, Karen, in a work environment or in a business environment, you know, you're not the only person, right? So what if there are multiple partners in a business? So there are two or three or four or five or six. And each one may have a different kind of gut feel. How do you balance that out? So you, it's not just about you, then it's about other people. And similarly, in a corporate environment where you have, you know, maybe your team members, you know, the team players are the stakeholders, let's say, are multiple stakeholders. So how do you then follow that gut instinct? Well, imagine you create a culture in your organization where this is the kind of conversation that is happening. Imagine having an executive team who are clear about their own values, about what they what is personally important to them, and individuals who are connected with their inner GPS, who take the time then to communicate with each other on a level of doing what they all know is for the common good. I mean, this is the kind of... Um, organization that I think these times are calling for and uh, wanting to see thrive this kind of culture. So we'll come back to more. Karen, I'm going to take a little relief for us. Can you sing something for us? I know you have oh. such a voice. I thought, why not? Why not listen to your the other side of you, which is the main side of you? Let me think. What am I going to sing for you? Okay, um, this is a song called The River of My Life. Okay. The way the water flows away It's almost making me ashamed there are so many days descending in years. I think I'm ready now to say, I want to be somewhere else, doing something else with somebody else. I see the river of my life I want to be somewhere else with someone else doing something else I see the river passing by Wow Wow, did you write this? I did. Wow. I did. How I did. amazing. I can just see you as a person being, you know, not being, trying not to judge, but I mean, depth. That's what I see, right? Depth in your voice, depth in your thinking, depth in your being, uh, Karen. So uh, coming back to this, thank you for, for doing that for us. So I'm just like, you know, sometimes there's no words to express. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Karen, what is important? What is your own Who's your idol? I mean, where do you get all this inspiration oh, from? My idol is Olivia Newton-John. And I, um, I was seven years old and I was in my family living room and on the television came the most important and influential person in the whole world, Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> and when I saw her, my life changed. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to become a professional singer and move to America. And she has inspired me tremendously throughout my life. How amazing. I love her as well. Uh, Karen, I'm just that brings me to the next question is what happens when people don't have that kind of a moment or inspiration? Where do they get the inspiration from? Where do they seek it? I see... It's interesting. There are, uh, 
I, I talk to a lot of people in my travels and there's a lot of talk about purpose and what you're here on what we're here on the planet for. And I believe everybody does know, you know, often when you're younger, people say, what do you want to do when you grow up? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I really want to do. I believe everyone does know. And it is about allowing ourselves to peel off those layers and or, or release or let go of uh, the fears and the resistance of listening to our true voice, our inner GPS. And the fear of what if we express what we really want to do and it's not accepted by others, not supported, or that I go for it and I don't make it. I don't achieve what I want to achieve. And I think that um, it is, it's a tragedy for a human being to be trapped in that way that's a trap right the fear traps us oh yeah our and we fear. we and we operate as if it's real yeah i, I know i do yep. i i am practicing always to remember that fear isn't real fear Fantastic. is fear but yeah. it's not actually real it's what i make it mean in the moment isn't that the most limiting thing karen in our lives Fear. But it's so it's so liberating when yeah. we become aware of that. Exactly. So so you know when you use the word recalculate, right? To me, recalculate means that you have calculated something, it hasn't worked. So now you're recalculating. So are we saying that you come into our life in a corporate environment when I'm already on a journey? That journey could be working, not working for me, and I'm thinking, let me restart that journey that there is potential for me to look at new opportunities, new learnings, new challenges. Is that where you come in? Where I come from is that there's always another level. And I am I, I am somebody who is a lifelong learner and I have a growth mindset. And I don't think there needs to be anything wrong to recalculate. I think it can be a case of using that tool of letting go of what did or did not happen on a daily basis or on a moment-to-moment basis, you know, during this particular time in in the world, uh, there's so uh, the ch- uncertainty is really challenging, and it's different in different countries at different stages of the pandemic. It's different in different um, communities and families and organizations. But sometimes we need to. Uh, reset ourselves once an hour wow sometimes it is a day-by-day situation in in a time of crisis and to be able to presence and represence ourselves and i think it's about maintaining or returning to an even emotional state because we get too high or we get too low and it takes us out. It takes us out of being able to be present, of being able to focus and be aware. So I think that recalculating is a practice that sure. really serves us, uh, especially if we're interested in living a full, meaningful life. So you think we can create balance in our lives? If, Definitely. If we have and, balance. and so that to me is also recalculating, right? It, but it's all a practice. It is. So it comes with practice. If we have, it is. So you give tools, we practice that, and we can get ourselves back to wherever we want to be. And it keeps changing, right? You keep recalculating. It keeps, life, right? Well, it keeps changing. And, and I mean, the, the journey of life is, is filled with opportunities to, <laughs> to navigate change. I mean, it is, it is we, we think we know where things are going to go, but we really don't know. Seriously, and look at the situation right now, the pandemic, where most of the countries are in lockdown. We are working from home. All of us are now in a situation where there's so much of uncertainty. We have no idea. I, you and I wouldn't be able to answer what happens tomorrow, right? I the, mean, the, in, and the entire world is yeah. recalculating. And in Correct. fact, I have been saying for a while, um, you know, I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit more normal <laughs> over two, you know, 
into our third month of of uh, of lockdown, I'm I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable with these new guidelines and this new way and more accepting too that this is what it is the shock I think has lifted but I am still saying that for many people it's too soon to recalculate we're in a phase uh I've been calling pre-calculate what you do before you really navigate change like to to get onto a level of creating a strong foundation, going back to basics, um, taking care of our health and well-being and our loved ones around us, feeling secure, um, just, just basics so that we can then feel strong enough when the time comes and when the timing is right to recalculate. Recalculating is an active process. So that's why I have been discussing pre-calculate. Fantastic. So Karen, basically what you're saying is this too shall pass, right? It's not permanent because a lot of people are beginning to worry. And then the kind of messages I get on my social media and when they ask me about bringing a new guest on the show and they say, can we talk about what happens? Will this continue? What happens if it continues for another year or two years or three years? What happens to us, to our jobs, to our family? Right. So what you're saying is there is hope. Use this time for whatever it is to build your energies, right? Whatever that is for us. Well, and it, and it might be like really back to basics. It might be I'm going to take a nap because I can't function. I don't feel like being productive. Whatever it might be, I am one of the most uh, goal-oriented productivity kind of people out there. For weeks, I could not. I could not create anything. I was so. I felt so ineffective. But we are in a crisis. It is okay to not have it together, and this will continue in some form for longer than we would like. And it is still. It can still be a day by day or week by week situation. Please, anybody listening right now, be gentle with yourself. Be very gentle with yourself. And we can only control what we can control. And for me, I've really been looking at, well, I know I can control um, being able to meditate every day. I can control what I'm eating and drinking and hydrating enough and eating more leafy greens than anything else. And I can control going for a walk. I can control these very, very basic parts. I can control looking at our finances and pausing anything that's unnecessary right now right. and applying for um, different uh, financial opportunities of assistance that I never imagined I would be applying for in my life. But I, there are definitely steps we can sure. all take on that fundamental level so we can do do what we can in our own power and in our own control to handle what's happening in the short term without knowing what's happening in the long term. Fantastic. I have a very important question. Before that, I'm going to read some more, some more comments here. Uh, Raj Singh Rawat, thank you, says one more gem in Raga show. Thank you. Uh, Josh Kruner says very touching. That's after you uh, performed. And uh, Josh Kruner himself is a very good singer, performer oh. from India. He's a beautiful voice himself. That's a big thing coming from Josh. Uh, Aiden says, mesmerizing voice mirrors her personality. I agree, Venkat. So uh, Hema Mehta says, so true, time to look within. And thank you, Hema. I think that's what Karen touched upon. Uh, Aiden B says, one question. Did Karen ever envisage that she will become this voice? And what is that one advice you would like to give to younger generation who are growing up with technology? Did I ever envisage? No, I did not. I mean, who could have imagined it? <laughs> when I was growing up, there was no such thing as a GPS. So no, I didn't. But I did, as I said before, I dreamed of my, I dreamed of being on stages and screens around the world as a singer and songwriter. And, and I have, 
done some of that, uh, certainly a lot of that, but more to come in the future. And the second uh, part of that question was advice for the younger generation growing up with technology. As convenient as it is to kind of lose ourselves in tech sometimes and not necessarily have the, the kind of face-to-face, eye-to-eye uh, connection with others, I would say that even though it seems like this is what old people do, being able to communicate and have a face-to-face, voice-to-voice, eye-to-eye conversation and to be able to develop that ability will make you so far ahead in whatever you choose to do in the future. So I would say to absolutely prioritise being able to do that, as uncomfortable as that may seem. Fantastic, Karen. Karen, I have a question. So, you know, we make decisions in life. Those decisions have consequences, like you said earlier, right? Those choices have consequences. Now, you you became the voice of Australia's Siri and you became the voice of GPS girl, right? You're the GPS girl. Has that ever come in the way of your life and your future as a professional? Did that limit you? It's an interesting question. I think it's such a fun, uplifting hook that brings joy to people that I've only seen it as a a positive. So I would have to say not that I really think, you know. See, this is what I I really admire about you, that no matter what I'm saying to you, I'm throwing what you call as a googly, right? It's like the scoped (laughs) scoped ones. But you, you were just positive no matter what. Because to me, I have met a lot of people in my life and I work with actors and celebrities as well. And uh, some say that I wish I had not done that role because I have boxed myself in a certain role and that has limited me in what I have done with my life. And and, and that's a perspective as well. It, it may have, maybe they haven't seen that because of that particular role, they have actually achieved the success that they have achieved. Right. right. So, well, I think that the positive of being a voice in a billion devices, I just think that it really is something to be used for good. And I feel like being able to look at it from a satellite view, um, I, I have a much bigger opportunity to share not only my music and my singing and my voice and those gifts, but also a message, a message that brings light to the world. And I I think that it's absolutely been an opportunity to do that. I want to hear the GPS girl, and I'm sure a lot of our audience who's talked in today wants to hear the GPS girl. Please say to us some speak to us in the GPS. Okay, story. all right. So, so some of the things they had me record were things like this: were um, at the next intersection, turn left. Oh, I forgot to say, turn, uh, close your eyes if you, uh, make sure you're not driving. But close your eyes when I'm speaking, and then that's a little bit more fun. Um, and what else did they have me record? They had me record, um, of course, recalculating, and then um, I love it. Oh, 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 you have reached your destination. <laughs> I love this one. I remember, uh, Karen, when we were first uh, you know, having this conversation and you were on screen and we had Milan Soman, our other partner. Nicola was there, the other partner. And I remember we asked you to say this, you reached your destination. Physically, Milan just fell. He was so Oh, shocked. it was so fun. <laughs> he just had a fall. He said, this is like, right. you sort of look around and think, what? You know, so I'm sure you have that kind of an impact on a whole lot of millions or billions right, right now. So I want to know, how does your family feel about it? And I know you've touched upon your, your son. How does your husband feel about it, that he's surrounded by Karen? Oh, um, he can't that. escape me, right? And the, the, the bossy voice. Oh, well, <laughs> my husband, and I, 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 well, I'm very fortunate. I got to marry the love of my life and he is as you know, entertained by the fact that this is the case as anybody. So, um, no, we do, we we have a lot of fun with it. 
He can't escape me though. <laughs> I don't. Never will. So, uh, so Nabil Masudi, thank you for joining in, Nabil. He says we need to discipline, confidence, repetition, practice, and struggle. Thank you so much. So I'm just trying to understand that we need we need discipline, confidence, repetition, practice, and struggle. So I'm assuming that it's a constant state of you know you have to focus, you have to be disciplined, you have to. Uh, have the confidence in doing what were you doing repeat the process keep practicing that's uh, that's the way i'm reading this uh, nabil uh, thank you so uh, karen what is it that uh, one big message that you give through your uh, uh, workshops oh 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 the one thing if you remember yeah. nothing else yeah from our conversation is that it is never too late to recalculate I love it. It, it is never, never too late to recalculate. You know, every guest I have, there's one magic that they bring and they'll say something like this. So it's right, never too late to recalculate. Let's say that. And never that too late it is to never too late to recalculate. And that's right. And what that means is there is always another step you can take. Even when things are dire and you think it's just such a mess. There is take a deep breath and know that there is always something that you can do. It's beautiful to have you today with us, Karen. This has really, really been beautiful. Is there any message, anything else you want to share before I end the session? Audience, any more questions? It's a great opportunity. Please feel free. We'll be around for a couple of minutes. But Karen, I've just really enjoyed. I've always loved talking to you and you know, Aww. always loved communicating. But the fact is that. The, just the way you put it across, it gives me so much hope. It gives me so much confidence that today may not be as good as I was expecting it to be. But I just feel that my tomorrow is going to be far better. And I'm so today. happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that. And, you know, in this time when we can't always be in person, live on stage in a room and with people, fortunately, we have opportunities to to be together virtually and to share remotely. You know, I've done a lot of online presentations and concerts and um, I've been speaking and sharing the message of recalculating and pre-calculating and listening to our inner GPS and in, as as much as it isn't how we would all have planned it and what we would have wanted to have happen, there have been some true benefits and, and you know, the opportunity to be in one part of the world and then present to people in another part of the world that I would not have connected with in this way. I mean, there's there's just so much scope so i i think again to keep our focus on what the benefits are really helps audience if anybody's interested you may ask a question and siri will respond in the series voice last opportunity <laughs> to ask uh, idens be saying never too late to recalculate might be the strategy for post covid 19 era for I sure agree. for sure i agree i agree i love that uh, sentence and i'm going to that phrase I'm going to post it all around. Uh, awesome. Hema says, awesome, so lovely. Josh Bruno also says, it's never too late to recalculate. I love it. That's a real powerful, powerful one-line message I've heard in this time. And anyone wants to ask a question to Siri? Let us know. Don't go away yet. As I think, okay, let's see what's come up. This is my daughter. Okay, Madhu Ranjit Singh says, this is my daughter, Anaya, who's nine years old. Oh, lovely. He Hi. Says, Hi, Anaya. Okay. How so to know how and what to recalculate? Well, I do look at how things feel. So if you are feeling upset or frustrated or you... Uh, angry or you have a case of the I don't feel like it or there's a dis dissatisfaction with how things are, then that is your indicator that it is time to recalculate. And then it, then I do have a five-step process which I'll send to you, uh, Rugged, Rugged, to put on the Facebook page sure. so that people can read that, come to the Facebook page and at speak, Speaking Minds and you will find that five-step 
process. Absolutely, absolutely. And anyone interested in inviting Karen to, you know, run a workshop, host a workshop, please let us know. Always happy to connect you to Karen. And uh, Aiden says, can you say this message in the Siri voice? And I'm assuming he's saying your phrase. It is never too late to recalculate. <laughs> Madhu says, Anaya, her nine-year-old says, Anaya just loves your voice. She just speaks sometimes to listen to your voice. Oh, Anaya. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Anyone else wants any bit of this? Let us know. Oh, and I have uh, a the song that I sang earlier, Raga. I have a music video and recording of that song. So I will send the link over to you if people are interested in hearing the whole song produced and performed. And I, I just learned how to edit music videos. So I have a, a music video of that song. Would love to listen to it, Karen. I'm going to say thank you to you, but I know in the end you will sing some more lines for us before we end the session. But in the meantime, I will end my part of the session, Karen, before you leave. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Karen, first of all. Thank you to the audience. I have to thank someone really special, Nicola Fenton, who sits behind the screen and she does all this curation for us and management to keep us alive and Facebook alive. And uh, thank you, uh, Nicola. And uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is Thursday. We have someone very interesting. We're going to talk about what happens after a uh, air crash. You know, how do you survive it and what happens to you? And a beautiful story by Tulsi that we'll bring to you tomorrow at uh, 8.30 India time and 4 p.m. Uh, London time. Karen, thank you very much. Karen, would you leave your beautiful boys with us? I want to be somewhere else Doing something else with somebody else I see the river passing by Thank you so much, Karen. Lots and lots of love to you. Stay well, stay safe. Thank you, Raj Singh, Robert, for wonderful things. Josh, all the audience. And Speaking Minds is here, always here. Let us know if you have any queries, any uh, requests for wonderful people like Karen Jacobson. And we will see you tomorrow. Thank you, Karen. And I'm on social media if you want to reach out. You know that already. Thank you. Bye-bye.